This is The Natural Laboratory, a podcast exploring science for Bay Area National Parks. I'm Cassandra Brooks. Can you tell me where we are right now? Point Reyes Peninsula, which is really one of the, one of the fog capitals of the universe. And looking out over uh, Point Reyes Headland and Drake's Bay and the Pacific Ocean, and it's a fantastic scene. Along the coast, it's particularly uh, exciting. You have so many different unique species that occur. That's Mike Vasey, a lecturer at San Francisco State University and PhD student at UC Santa Cruz who studies plants on the California coast. The rich, lush environment of Point Reyes, and really all of coastal California, heavily depends on the fog. During rainless summers, this fog, which can account for one-third of the ecosystem's water input, is critical to the persistence of the local plants and ecosystem. Earlier you were explaining to me where fog originates from. Could you tell that story to me now? Let me uh, start here on the coast. We have upwelling of really cold waters, very rich, nutrient rich, right off the right off the immediate coast. And then winds that are warmer, that have a lot of moisture, come sweeping in off the Pacific. And when they hit that upwelling cold water, they condense into fog. And then the third big factor is that you have these uh, hot air masses that are moving out towards the ocean at high elevation. And as they move out towards the Pacific, they kind of depress down and cause an inversion of that condensation, that cloud layer. So it becomes this so-called marine layer. And this occurs in the late spring through the summer. But recent studies have indicated that the fog is declining from the California coast. I went to meet with Todd Dawson, a professor at UC Berkeley who has studied California fog for decades. In a recent study with former graduate student and postdoc Jim Johnstone, Dawson found some troubling trends. And Jim and I basically discovered that if we looked over the last 50, 60 years, we started to see that not only temperatures along the coast were warming up, but fog was actually declining. And when we started to really look at that even over longer time frames, we began to see really over the last century, fog has been declining and it's declined by about 30% in about 100 years here in coastal California. Are you able to see any impact on the environment yet from this or will it take longer to, to see a shift? We're beginning to see some signs that, that that change in the fog water inputs may be having some impacts in the southern parts of, say, the Redwood Range. So you go down to southern Big Sur, right at the very southern end of where the coast Redwood lives, and we begin to see now that the summers are a lot drier. Soils dry out, they're drier for a longer period of time. And it means that perhaps the Redwood Range will shift north or will just decrease or might go away altogether? So some of the, yeah, some of the predictions that have been um, sort of recently released, and this work has been done by a woman named Healy Hamilton that's really been interested in sort of modeling climatic envelopes of plants, and she's focused very specifically on the coast redwood. And she said just what you said, is that the climatic envelope that's going to favor the coast redwood is going to creep its way north into Oregon, mm -hmm. and also it's going to creep its way west. And of course, that's impossible because as we go west, we hit the Pacific Ocean. So what that really means is that the, the envelope is getting narrower, mm -hmm. it's moving north, mm -hmm. and at the southern end of the range, it's going to get drier and hotter, and we're probably going to be losing trees there eventually. Whether that happens in the next 20 years, the next 50 years, we can't really say yet. What can people do? You know, what can the national parks do or the state parks do to deal with that? Well, I think there's a couple of strategies that we've been talking with the parks um, about. Um, of course, there's always playing a very active role. I mean, you know, we can plant trees, and we can plant trees into areas that may be much more favorable, little microclimatic areas, little niches that we know could be very favorable to healthy redwood growth. Um, those are obviously going to be wetter, cooler areas because the redwoods really love those. We could also try to in a, in a sort of a, an entire geographical context, go and do an analysis of where are those climatic niches that might be very favorable for future recruitment and healthy growth for mature trees and make sure those areas are set aside. A few of my friends I mentioned to that you know, I was doing this story on how fog is declining in the, in the Bay Area and Santa Cruz area, they said, no way, it has not, you know, I see just as much fog, there's more fog. 
you have to take kind of the normal oscillation along with the long-term trends to really kind of understand how something like fog decline or temperature increases really play out. Mm -hmm. In our human experience, you know, we kind of remember one year at a time, and I think sometimes that's why people say, hey, wait a minute, it was a really foggy year last year, and you go, you know, you're right, it was. But in the long-term picture, it's actually been on the decline. With the Pacific Coast Science and Learning Center, I'm Cassandra Brooks.